Welcome back, all of you music lovers and fans of Battle of the Ballads to our one or two people. I want to start tonight's episode a little differently by giving a special birthday shout out to friend of the show, Ellen. Uh, happy birthday, Ellen. Thank you for participating every week and tuning in. And I uh, hope you enjoyed your day at the zoo today. And we'll be sharing your picks of the year soon. Um, but I did not want to forget that moment. I actually tried to stay up till midnight last night to message her happy birthday, and I failed and fell asleep. So this is my apology. And uh, on that note, also don't forget to like and subscribe and comment because maybe we'll give you a little birthday shout out. So, gentlemen, we're in 2015. Yes, we, we are. are. 2015. And I know Gregory's got some excitement about this one. And I was hoping to. And uh, I was saying, I think it was on uh, No Coast last night with Craig that I found this was the year where I was DJing everything possible so I could pay for diapers and daycare. And I just stopped listening to new music because I hated hearing it so much that I just reverted to my 80s and 90s on my own playlist because I heard all the new stuff so much. So my list is very short, but only for that reason, not because it wasn't a good year. Mm. Um, so I'm going to be curious to see what, what yours are. Now, I did have a little bit of feedback this week uh, for some picks. <laughs> like I didn't ask, he just wants us to listen to Gary Lewis and the Playboys. Although I want to see Gary Lewis and Huey Lewis um, battle of the bands. And... What else do we have here? Ellen, the birthday woman, gave us a debut of note. And so she's got a debut there, Greg. Uh, yeah. Country artist Cam, one of her faves, which I remember working with her when this came out and she was so stoked. Uh, her second single, Burning House, was released this year. And it's an amazing song. And the night from the weekend, who ended up in her top three uh, listened to on Spotify this year. We just had that discussion last week, her and I. My Church from Aaron Morris. Hello from Adele. See You Again from Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth, The Hills from The Weeknd, Don't Want to Fight from Alabama Shakes, and Josh Groban released a musical theater album, Stages. Highlights for Ellen included Anthem from Chess and Empty Chairs at Empty Tables from Les Mis. Also, oh, Chess must be a musical. I don't know any of that stuff whatsoever. <laughs> um, my guy Brian McBride. I've lost track of any music created after pretty much 2011. I'm certainly not hip with the times anymore, like a modern dad. I definitely can feel that. And Justin Zane gave us his list, which she said was shorter this year. Cutting it down from 18 to 13 was easy. Cutting the last three to trim it down to his usual 10 was tough. Uh, he said he could have only listed every song of Blurry Face and been content with that as the best nine song run. So he's got a little challenge for you there, Greg, a nine song run of alt rock. I mean, I've made a whole album, I think twice to this thing is the, the <laughs> song of the year, which automatically makes them, I think 10 track runs usually, so. Oh, we got a battle of 10 verse nine here. <laughs> he gave us the Silver Sun Pickups, uh, Circadian Rhythm, Panic, Victorious, AWOL Nation, I Am, uh, the 1975 Love Me, Foles, Mountain at My Gates, Halsey, New Americana, 21 Pilots, Stressed Out, Imagine Dragons, Roots, Nathaniel Rateliff in the Night Sweats, Son of a Bitch, Calio, Way Down We Go, and he said, what a miserable year of music, largely because of Pink Frog's Baby Shark. So there we have it for our list of the audience there, and I know that you had an interesting uh, text with some fun songs. Yeah, well, Chirp watches almost immediately when it gets put up but he watches on his playstation so he sent me a text to let me know he can't comment because the playstation doesn't let him comment and we had a long conversation about it he uh he mentioned to me that taylor swift and madonna are the only female artists to replace themselves at number one so mm -hmm. he wanted to chime in on that argument um and then he also said keep the tangents they make the show so i know <laughs> we were tangent heavy last week and chirp sure. wants us Chirp wants us to maintain them. But then as far as the list he gave me this year, uh, as I was telling Dan on No Coast Defenders, which after you listen to this, you can watch out here on YouTube or you can listen to on Spotify. He, I was going to text him because I hadn't heard from his list and I knew there's a couple albums he loved this year. Uh, and he had immediately sent me a message with it. So his list is Laugh Till I Cry from the Front Bottoms, The Shade for Metric, which currently I only have the album version but there's an acoustic version i think well i'll add to the playlist as well uh get better from frank turner 
I don't like who I was then by the Wonder Years. Make you better by the Decemberists, uh, which I'm not going to lie, get better and make you better are going to be showing up on my list, as will Long Haul from Potty Mouth, a band we discovered together when we saw them open for Against Me. We all float down here from Four Years Strong. Ship to Wreck from Florence and the Machine. The Wolf from Mumford and Sons. And he said, obviously it was going to be off Beat the Champ. Song of the Year is Heel Turn 2 by the Mountain Goats, which is a wonderful, wonderful song. So I'm glad he made it his Song of the Year. It is not going to be my Song of the Year, but it is definitely one I will be mentioning um, with that album pretty much in its entirety when I get to my list. So that is what I got from good old Chirp, who hopefully he is winning at trivia right now. I love that he comes home from trivia and then lodges this. Oh, well, Tuesdays he's doing Zoom trivia, and that's one of the reasons he can't miss it is there's only three teams still doing it, and so he's got to support that. Gotcha. Beautiful. Now, do you want to go into your list of debuts as well right there after uh, Chirp's beautiful list? Yeah, not counting uh, the debut we got from Ellen. There are still a number of debuts. Dan you, you didn't have Cam? It wasn't at the top of your list? I... Actually, it was the first because she mentioned it before I started looking at the debuts. But yes, uh, but we mentioned the Megan Trainer songs, which were all singles last year. The album came out this year. Uh, Fifth Harmony, their debut album was this year. I think they only have two. Um, Al King, uh, who is billed as alternative country and blues rock, which I just thought was a fun. Those two are very similar. So I thought that was a fun Barrett thing. Um Carol Barrett and the Jackal, which is uh, from a band from the Libertines and Dirty Little Mouse co-frontmen. Um, AJR, Will Butler of Arcade Fire released his solo album this year. Mm -hmm. uh, Will Butler, if you are not aware, is a huge, huge basketball fan and routinely pops up on basketball podcasts to talk basketball. Uh, he's very, very knowledgeable about it. So it's not just like, oh, let's see this guy you've heard of. He loves basketball. He's knowledgeable on it. Uh, Courtney Barnett, her debut album was this year. Uh, Courtney Barnett, just a phenomenal artist, does a lot of guest spots and everything. So, uh, Sabrina Carpenter is our actor debut album of the year. Uh, Sean Mendez debut album this year. Young Thug, uh, Tom DeLong, believe it or not, took him this long to release a solo album. Well, because he just had forty five other projects going on. That's that's that is true. I mean. Travis Barker found time to release a solo album a few years before that. So true. And I think I think he might be the of the three members, I think he's the only one who has more than Tom DeLong for side projects. But uh, Chris Stapleton, debut album this year. Uh, Jamie XX of the XX, oddly enough, go figure there. Uh, solo debut. Uh, Slaves, who are a Brit punk band. Uh, only mentioned because I want to talk about how terrible that name was. Um, get a better name, Brit punk band. Uh, Wolf Alice, Vince Staples solo album was this year. Uh, Melina Martinez, who I believe got her start on The Voice and became pretty huge on TikTok early. Yep. Uh, and then actually the album released this year got big on TikTok again in 2020 or 2021, one or two. So good for her. Um, Hollywood Vampires, which is a super group of Alice Cooper, Johnny Depp, and Joe Perry, named after a drinking club that Cooper started in the 70s, I believe yes. it was. So what an odd thing. Uh, and Julianne Baker, which was originally self-titled on her band camp, but was then changed to Sprained Ankle when it was released on the album the, the same year. So uh, good, fun move from Julian Baker. So. <laughs> Very eclectic list this year. Yeah, I tried to mix a couple of country in because I know I don't ever talk about it. Yeah, um, no that, need to. Well, no, that Chris Stapleton was that album's amazing that's actually the country i kind of grew up on with like uh, my grandparents stuff like kind of outlaw country singer songwriter stuff not the pop stuff that's out today i gotta be honest i really thoroughly enjoyed that album um and he's also i mean he's another one of those guys where he sat back and wrote songs for artists for many many years and now he's kind of in the limelight and you know during his recovery like all this stuff just a really cool story um so i love that album Joseph, what kind of punk stuff are you kicking us off with? Well, there was only one Punk Goes album released this year, 
and it was really a re-release it's a deluxe edition of the punk ghost christmas album but it only has four new tracks on it and none of them are very good so i actually have nothing significant to add to the punk ghost christmas from a few years ago um yeah i was a little bit surprised it's been i think this is like the first year and i think six five or six where we haven't had two punk goes albums but it is what it is i think honestly it's kind of fitting because a lot of those punk goes covers don't add too much to the original so yeah not for the christmas stuff i prefer a lot of their covers of other songs but the christmas stuff i mean i just don't like christmas songs generally speaking so yeah whatever don't boo me i have an in-house audience booing me over here what is this garbage okay but jumping into my actual list um i'll kind of speed through some of the things that have already been said uh chirp mentioned the wonder years i don't like who i was then uh that's on my list um I think a couple people mentioned the L or Gregory mentioned the L King album as a debut. Um, I really like her voice. It's really interesting. Isn't she Rob Schneider's daughter? She is. Um, and I really like both X's and O's on America's sweetheart off that debut album. Uh, I think they're really fun. I wouldn't myself classify them as an alternative country, but I don't know. What do I know about these esoteric uh well i think the thing genres is, she's been featured with country artists on songs like she has a song with miranda lambert right now yeah um tap on the shoulder for knowing that i found that out in the car the other day uh, <laughs> so i think it's just kind of who she hangs with is that, that the song thing. about going out and getting drunk yes okay i i heard that song as well so <laughs> um james bay released an album this year and had both hold back the water and let it go Mm-hmm. Uh, I was in this was um, about a year and a half into my time in California uh, and I actually had friends at this point so I was listening to a lot of radio with in other people's cars and I really like those James Bay songs I'm glad I, I picked those up I think probably from Chloe um, Hailstorm released an album this year uh, for the most part I wasn't real high on this album uh but in 2014 uh lizzie hale had come out as bi and on this album she released this they released a song called new modern love uh and it's it's very much about empowering uh about your own relationship and not hiding who you are and loving who you love um so i i I do enjoy that song for what it means not as much as like what it sounds like Mm because not really high on any of those the songs off that album but uh dance gavin dance uh post hardcore band i don't think i've mentioned yet i got into them a little bit later uh but one of my favorite songs is off this album we own the night uh which i still listen to all the time uh sean mendez stitches came out i don't know if it was released as a single this year but the album was released this year uh that's this is one i didn't know about until probably two years later when it was on our morale drive in Thule, and i would bounce around the training shop and sing it to the people to my uh, instructors so um they got annoyed with it but i loved that song <laughs> um 21 pilots stressed out uh, somehow this is their fourth album they've released and I don't think I had knew who they were until this song. Uh, so I guess good on them for uh, finally making it to my ear holes on their I fourth album. That's you and most of America, to be honest. Uh, I think before this, they had that car stereo or that ra- radio or, or some song about some, some radio or stereo or something before this, but I, I'd never heard that until this song. So um Jason Derulo, I think this is the second time I've mentioned him. You didn't do it. Because there's always one thing on an album I like. The last time it was trumpets and the actual horns in that song. Uh, in Want to Want Me, there's a vocal run towards the end of the song. Uh, I think it's after like the third chorus that I think is fantastic. And it's the only part I really care about that song. But you, you yeah, there's a really... respect on his name. <sighs> it's not good. But you didn't say it though. Oh, Jason Derulo. There Sorry. Is. There it is. I got you. Um, 
Lucas Graham uh, broke onto the scene. Apparently, I thought it was a single person named Lucas Graham. What is going on? Is that was that I, you, Gregory? No, my computer. What, what just <laughs> I don't know. My computer just opened with Spotify randomly, and we're back. Yeah. We got themes this week. Uh, yeah, I thought Lucas Graham was a, a an individual. Apparently, it's a Danish pop group, and this was their second album. Uh, but Seven Years really busted on the scene that year. Uh, real good song, but I would have guessed it was just a dude named Lucas Graham, and I was a fool. <laughs> uh, Breaking Benjamin released, I don't know, this is probably like their sixth album at this point, seventh album, Dark Before Dawn. Um, I'd kind of fallen, they'd fallen off my radar at this point, uh, so I don't know a lot about this album other than the song Never Again which they played live when I saw them in 2017. And I do really like it. I need to go back and revisit that album because I think it's probably better than I remember. Uh, Carly Rae Jepsen threw this one on there for the girls because I Really Like You was on this album. And uh, for a while, Gregory had that as his alarm sound. And so it would go off, the girls would get up and dance in the kitchen. And it was great. Nice. And he had to go and ruin it by changing his song. Uh <laughs> Emma has been getting up and dancing to spoons, knock That's knock knock, true. which was song of the year. So, uh, we came as Romans. I've mentioned them a couple of times, so I won't go into it too deep. But they have a song called Blur off of this year's album that I really enjoy. Uh, Disturb released their cover of Sound of Silence. I, I try not to include too many covers except in the Punk Goes section, but they do a really good job on that that version. Um. Shine Down, another band I've talked about at length, so I won't go into it too much uh, because this is kind of a down album for me, but Cut the Cord is a real good song um, to check out if you don't know this album too much, uh, which brings me to Fetty Wap. Uh, not that I like Fetty Wap at all, but at this point out in California, we were going out dancing in uh, San Luis Obispo pretty frequently. And at this point, Trap Queen was everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it is fun to dance to. I will give it that. So Fetty Wap, Trap Queen made my list this year. Um, ooh, Coheed and Cambria is on my list next. I've left off the last few albums because I, I've gushed about them a lot. And I will again here in a few years. But I wanted to bring this album up, uh, The Color Before the Sun, because this is the first and only album they've released up to this point. That is not a concept album. It is not connected to uh, his comics, his novels, the whole world building that they are doing. He, he took a break to write an album for his son, Atlas. Um, and it's got two really great songs that are dedicated to, well, I mean, the whole album's dedicated to Atlas, but uh, the titular song for him, Atlas, as well as You've Got Spirit Kid, are both really fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it was weird for them to just like, do a completely different type of album and it was like hey here's all this sci-fi world building seven albums i think and <laughs> here's this one that is just a regular album that most people would do and now we're back to world building again i have a question uh, about the album this year from them joe sure did it make you shrug stop i hate you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh J Beebs. Uh this happened. This album was released what just about six months after his last uh time being arrested, uh, and was kind of part of his Justin Bieber uh redemption tour. Um, and I actually really like both Sorry and Love Yourself, and I hate how much I actually like both of those songs. You know what? It's it's nice that he actually wrote them, to be honest. Yeah. I think you wrote them with uh, uh, Benny Blanco, right? I think so. I'm not positive on that, so I can't say that with any kind of authority. But uh, yeah, I actually really like those songs, and I hate how much I do. Um, Rita Ora released Poison this year. Never made it on an album for some reason, but it's the only Rita Ora song I care about. Uh, so I'm bringing it up now. And then uh, brings me to... No, not shortlist. Yes, I, I skipped over Adele. Adele's 25 was released this year, and she just rakes in Grammys at this point in her career, right? Oh, yeah. Um, 
so there's a this almost had the three song run of the year because it starts with hello then goes to send my love to your new lover but then there's a, a, a random track in there that was never released as a single and then we get to when we were young so she had to just put in a throwaway um but going to my short list, uh, I'm going to bring up one of those songs again. I wanted to mention it as a uh, part of a three track run, but it's on my short list as well. Um, Halsey released her debut this year, right? Um, I think Gregory mentioned that. I couldn't remember if it's first or second, but I think this was actually the second. Okay. Um, I don't care about most of the album, but Colors is fantastic. Uh, I absolutely love that song. And it was really cool the way she did it live, uh, the light show for it. I mean, it's called Colors, so obviously the light show was going to be fantastic for it. So I really, really enjoyed that one. Um, Ellie Goulding released Love Me Like You Do. I had never heard this song. I, I think Ellie Goulding's a fine singer. I don't necessarily care that much. But we had gone out for uh, my friend Casey's birthday, and, and her and another close friend of mine, Drew, have been married for a number of years one of my favorite couples uh, and we had just gotten done with dinner and we get out to the car. They were driving me to the movies we were going to afterwards and Drew's face lit up when he wanted, he was telling me about this song because he was so excited. I had never heard it and he got to introduce it to me. Uh, and it was just, I never expected his face to light up quite the way it did just oh, introducing to the song. So like uh, what a wonderful memory of Drew. Uh, so that's on my short list. Um, one other song on my list, I kind of break my own rules here. Uh, Secrets, uh, another post-hardcore band, released an album called Renditions. And it was uh, an album, uh, it was an EP of all just acoustic versions of songs they had done. And normally I don't bother uh, including too many acoustic albums, but it's such a different style from like the normal post hardcore, a lot of dirty vocals, a lot of heavy drumming, that kind of thing to just strip all of that out and just have an acoustic backing. Uh, and so it's, it, they're so different that it is like completely different songs. Um, but there's a really amazing song off this one called fragile figures. Um, it's a very introspective song. And so when they stripped everything out and just had the acoustic backing, it just hits completely different. Uh, and then finally, song of the year, it's got to be Adele Hello, right? Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's Adele's Hello. Uh, I mean, no question. Yep. Nope. No more to that, right? It's just Adele's Hello. It's got to be. All right. I got you down for Hello from Adele, uh, a song that nobody has ever heard in their lives. Nope, never. <laughs> I mean, it's it's really hard not to pick that one. I, I did my best to avoid it, but I guess we'll see where I end up. I haven't actually picked my song yet, so I I looked and I wasn't going to this, but maybe in another year I would have been able to uh, fight it and and pick something else just because if there was something at least close. But I mean, if it's but, the best, it's the best. How do you how do you get around it? You know, it, and you know, there's nothing even remotely close in this year, uh, similar to what uh, you had said earlier in in the show, Dan. Like, I didn't necessarily. I I like a lot of this music. It's fine, but I have no strong feelings towards most of what was released this year. Yeah, and so I mean, except I guess hello i mean i have memories attached to some of this stuff but like that uh, no i definitely uh, even really close yeah no i you can't argue with it uh except for when gregory argues with it right now so gregory what do you got for us my friend i'm not gonna necessarily argue with it but i will tell you guys straight up adele did not make my list or my short list oh my. simply because at this point for me adele was a woman in the jukebox that some drunk person was going to butcher while I was playing. So I have no attachments to Adele. Like Adele is super talented. The songs are wonderful. I would never argue this Adele is not the song of the year, but it doesn't hit for me just because my introduction to Adele was simply drunks butchering Adele in the jukebox, which isn't a fair representation to her, but I mean, it's the list of 
song. I know we bill it as the best song of the year, but it's the best song for us of the year. And that's how music should be. Yeah. We've, we, we build this show as trying to find the best song since 1984, but it's really what we end up doing is we find our favorite song from each year (laughs) and then argue which one of those is actually the best, which I really, I mean, it's, I, I wouldn't knock anyone if they picked Lauren Hill or uh, Alicia Keys as their favorite music from the 90s and 2000s, but I don't think most people would. I think a lot of people who would watch this show would say objectively, we got both of them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm interested to see where that goes. Well, I, I would say that that one Lauren Hill album is like one of those influential hip hop, like R&B albums of all time. So I don't know, like that one. I feel like if you don't appreciate that album, there's something else. But like at the same time, I'm not putting Adele on my list. So, okay, yeah. but I think, I think when you say best song of the year or best song since 1984, it's impossible to find something that even half the people are going to agree with because True. Art is subjective. Art should be subjective. There should be emotion attached to it. And if you're trying to take that emotion out, like you're wrong. I will not say you're wrong about song choices, but you're wrong about trying to take emotion out of what is the best song because art is supposed to hit you. So what you got for us? All right. So we're going to start with, uh, I think I mentioned last year, like this is when I really started listening to Spotify was right about now for more than just podcasts like Spotify had always just been podcasts for me so it was actually probably about 2016 I started listening to more music on it I was using Google Play before then because they had a lot of playlists that I loved their indie makeout playlist was a fucking jam I miss Google Music for that playlist alone but it was that was all the music I was listening to was on that playlist and it was just a great I'm reading at night playlist but so the first couple of bands I have and songs, they're just going to be things that I discovered on Spotify and have grown to love these songs. Uh, the Graduates from uh, Speedy Ortiz, uh, Cool Sluts from Chastity Belt, and No Cities to Love. Uh, and Cool Sluts particularly, it's just about like the empowerment of like, hey, women love sex. Like you can't be derogatory about that. You can't shame us for that. And I think that's just a wonderful message. Um Tyler, the creator's album, Cherry Bomb. I think this was really when he first started to experiment. Not an album I love, but I just respect Cherry Bomb and the fact that he was taking this chance so much that I put Cherry Bomb on there. And then the Mountain Goats, Beat the Champ. Uh, it's just an amazing album. Like, how do you do a whole album about pro wrestling and it's critically acclaimed? It's just... It's so insane that they chose to do this. And a lot of the critics' things like, hey, they took wrestling a subject most of their fan base isn't going to like and made it universally appealing. And that's kind of crazy. And if you see them live, uh, they d- will play songs about this album. And there's no getting around it. The Mountain Goats are a hipster band. And it's just hilarious to see all these like hipsters singing some of these tracks. Uh, But some of my favorites, uh, The Legend of Chavo Guerrero, which is, for those who don't know, the Guerrero family are just this legendary Mexican wrestling family. Eddie Um, Guerrero's family? Yeah, so Chavo was Eddie's uncle. Um, No, Chavo was Eddie's brother, because Chavo Jr., who Eddie wrestled with, is his nephew. So, yeah, Eddie was younger than the other Guerreros. uh, Chavo was the big baby face in like the the Hispanic communities in California and this song as much as it's about Chavo Guerrero is literally about being abused by his stepfather and Chavo Guerrero was his hero that's what he looked up to that's what wrestling was to him in this in this area this era so it says so much about this album and what wrestling meant to him growing up because he was abused as a child like by a person who was supposed to be taking care of him And he had the hero Chavo Guerrero who always defeated the bad guys. So just really, really heart-wrenching and beautiful track. Chirp mentioned Heel Turn 2, which was almost my shortlist track. So I was kind of glad he like picked it. Uh, This album means so much to the two of us. Uh, And then Werewolf Gimmick is a little sillier one, literally about a masked wrestler who acts like a werewolf. Uh, It's just brilliant. And the songs are beautiful. 
yeah, the songs are beautiful, and so you don't need to know wrestling to love it, and we'll get into that here in a moment. Uh, and of course, Carly Ray. Joe mentioned I really like you, which everyone always when I mention Carly Ray, if they don't say Call Me Maybe, they say this <laughs> song, and they had the all the really, 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 because there are a lot of reallys in the chorus, and I think it was a smart move by her not to name it that. Um, Run Away With Me is the opening of this album, mm -hmm. and it is opening of the year for me, because the saxophones on this album are absolutely beautiful. Uh, and then Black Heart, which is another song it's never been my alarm. So Joe might not have heard it. And I think it's just when me, when I'm with the girls, I will put just Carly Rae on my phone. And this is one of the songs uh, Anya learned to sing almost immediately. She listened to it one time and had the words. Um, I mean, if there was one night, I just had to leave Carly Rae playing on my computer because she wanted to continue to listen to it. And I was not going to stop her. Uh, but yeah, Black Hearts is a brilliant song well-reviewed album i think critics were kind of shocked at how good this album was because it is a very pop album but she kind of changed the pop sound mm -hmm. i think kiss the one before this was brilliant too but this is the one i think that made her a critical darling i didn't realize in 2015 it was released until it, i think i saw on like seven or eight different critics top 10 lists of the year and i was like oh shit i need to listen to this and that was when my deep dive of carly ray happened Ben Folds released an album that he recorded with an entire orchestra. It is billed as chamber pop. This is the last Ben Folds solo to date. There's an, a live album and I think like a collection of unreleased tracks that come out in the next two years. Uh, but So There is just, I think it's the third track on this album. And the violin in this song is just brilliant and crazy and just makes me so happy to hear. Uh, Yes Man is another one, good one. And uh, Phone in a Pool is just a, I think it's the song I heard first off this album and it's so catchy. Uh, then we get to The Decemberists, one of my favorite bands. This might be in the running for my favorite Decemberists album, but uh, Till the Water's All Gone. And this album opens with the singer addresses the audience, which is just this, brilliant track both criticizing and sympathizing with the the cult culture of bands especially indie bands i think something we were kind of talking about last last week with the like the number of subgenres and everything and this kind of like i mean one of the lines is i know you did your hair like our drummer so it's just kind of a great track that both pays homage and criticizes like that fandom which is great. Uh, Makeshift Shelter, this song is definitely not about a boy. And I know everyone remembers when we read our most played tracks after the 90s. And this was, I think, third on my list back then. So uh, Potty Mouth, I mentioned with Chirp's thing because he had long haul cherry picking off that. This is an EP from them. Uh, just a really great EP. I think it's five tracks and they're all brilliant. Uh, the Good Life released an album this year. Uh, Troubadour's Green Room and How Small We Are are both really, really great tracks off this. Uh, Melina Martinez with that debut album. Crybaby, Sippy Cup, uh, Milk and Cookies. This is a brilliant first album. I know she had a bunch of TikTok singles, and I think some of these were TikTok singles before that. But it's just really, really polished for a debut album that blends so many genres together. Um, and in the theme of, I think, the music on my list this year, if there is one, she's very uh, sex positive and sex forward and doesn't apologize for it, which I think is just brilliant. I love that that's where we're starting to become as a society because it's always was shocking in the 90s, like when a woman released a track song that was dirty and it could never be as dirty as what a man could do. And so I love that we're moving towards that. To be fair, like it's not going to be for everyone and that's fine. Don't listen to it. But I love that they are empowered enough to do that. Chaos, a really fun album, really funky beats. And I think it's You Can't Fly With Gravity or something like that is the name of this album. Uh, but Spaceship is my favorite track off this album. Just It's one of those albums you kind of have to listen to, which as a related thing, the jazz group Bad Bad Not Good released an album with um, Ghostface this year. Really good album, but there's not a song that stands out because it's 
great background music because it is literally Ghostface Killer rapping over jazz beats. So I added a couple of tracks from that album off this playlist, but none of them made my short list. I just want when you guys hear that, I'm like, oh, what is this? No one talked about this. That is why. Um, it's a really <laughs> fun album. Bad, Bad, Not Good is just a really fun group, but they are their kind of background music, and I don't mean that in an offensive way because there's background music you ignore and there's background music you enjoy while it's listening to, and I feel like they're in that latter group. Chirp and Joe both mentioned The Wonder Years. Uh, they picked a great track off of it, but for me, the two best are A Song for Patsy Cline and Stained Glass Ceiling. And it would make sense they pick one of the heavier out songs, and I would pick two of the songs that are less heavy from that because that's just our styles. Uh, Matthew Good released an album that I loved, um, Moment in Cloud Busting, featuring Molly McNarlin. Uh, Cloud Busting is just beautiful and wonderful. Uh, Jeff Rosenstock released a really great album. Uh, you and Weird Series and Nausea, and then Nausea and uh, beers alone again would make my two track run. There's a track between weird cities and nausea, so I can make it longer than that. But honestly, the mountain goats and the December albums and even the Carly Ray album, I could have picked a three track run at any of those. So I was like, I don't need a three track run this year because three of these albums, I would have picked top to bottom if I wanted to go that long. Now you're just flexing that. because somebody yeah, challenged well, rivalry yeah. with you and Justin there. Joe has also said he could pick all albums multiple times in this, so it's not like this isn't something we've done before. But yeah, Justin, bring it. Bring it. Uh, but no. Justin, we want your 21 song stretch next. <laughs> we want your double album stretch. Uh, no skits either. If a skits in the middle, it ruins the stretch. But I mentioned the Colleen Green with the debut album and I threw a couple of tracks off, off of that, even though none of them hit it because it's not my favorite Colin Green album. But I do love this uh, second album, uh, TV and Whatever I Want are my two favorites off that. Uh, and then, unfortunately, I made a blunder with last year because I, this the Decemberist album this year and Damien Rice album, my favorite Faded Fantasy, were in heavy rotation for me in 2015. And I was just convinced the Damien Rice came out in 2015. <laughs> so none of these songs are making my short list and definitely not my song of the year. But I did want to mention my favorite Faded Fantasy, The Greatest Bastard, and I Don't Want to Change You, which are my three favorite tracks on this album, just because we make up our own rules and we can change them all the time. So, <laughs> so I just, I needed to mention those, but I didn't feel right putting them in my short list. Although had I gotten the year right, they definitely would have been my short list last year, one of those. So my short list is only four songs this year, simply because I wanted to pick multiple songs off multiple albums, and I just wanted to keep it one per. So I'd mentioned the hipsters crowds for the Mountain Goats, and Foreign Object is one of the songs they will play. And it is amazing because the chorus is just Foreign Object, Foreign Object, and I just love watching this crowd sing Foreign Object. It puts me at being a live wrestling show when someone's cheering, when someone brings in a foreign object. So it really, really captures that moment. And it's just a fun, catchy chorus too. Uh, Chirp mentioned Make You Better from the Decemberists. And that's right there um, for me as a song of the year. I, I could have picked anything off of that album, but I went with Make You Better. Uh, Beers Alone Again, Jeff Rosenstock, which was part of the two song run. It's the first Rosenstock song I heard. And it just felt right, especially in my late 20s, early 30s. I was drinking beers alone again quite often. So it's just like, I was like, oh shit, he is writing songs for me. And I kind of feel that a lot about uh, Rosenstock songs. Mm -hmm. But my song of the year, I Didn't Just Come Here to Dance by Carly Ray Jepsen. <laughs> Wonderful. It's just uh, a brilliant song, and it's not nearly as explicit as some of the other like empowerment songs I mentioned this year, but it's it's very much implied what she showed up to do, and it's a big change from here's my number, call me maybe, like to I didn't just come here to dance, like in telling you explicitly what she wants. So uh, really, really big step, and Kylie Ray, much like with Kiss, wrote on every song this album. Not the sole writer on any of the songs, I don't think, but wrote on every one of these tracks. Um, and that's her nature. She's a very collaborative musician. 
And I think with the next one, we're going to get, I'll get more into that because she did an incredible stunt for the next one to get a song that I'm just in awe of. So that's a little teaser for 2019, I believe. So this was my favorite album of hers, honestly. And I, I just, I really like that track too. Um, her songwriting, I don't think she gets enough credit because the singles she's released don't really show her range, but she's got a lot of talent. Yeah, and it's uh, pop songs throughout the history of, I think, pop music always have either a number of writers or someone who writes a shit ton of pop songs. And I think that sometimes gets held against artists, but you have jingles if you sample a lyric from someone, you put them down as, a, as in the writing credits. So there are sometimes reasons for this. And a lot of the people she wrote the song with also produce. So a lot of that's going to happen in the studio when you have, when you're a collaborative artist. Uh, but yeah, she doesn't get the credit. She should as a songwriter. And she's not writing every single word like some artists do. And that's understandable to like kind of knock that against her, but I don't I don't know it depends on what you're judging right like if you're judging is that a good song I don't give a shit who wrote it I don't care if the people performing it did or didn't Uh, one of the things I've mentioned a, a number of times is one of the reasons I like covers so much is I love to hear different takes on the same thing uh and so I I personally like if if you're discussing what is the best song or what is your favorite song who wrote it means very little to me now if your conversation is who is the best singer songwriter uh who is the best uh writer i guess or uh who has the most encompassing career or something like that i think that stuff matters more but if you're just uh, if you're just talking about does this is this a good song do you enjoy this song and I don't disagree. I just wanted to prop up her songwriting because sure. she is an underrated songwriter. But just there's also your take on that. And then you have the music snob purist who ruins music and fun for everybody who does care about all of those minute <laughs> that drive all of the reviews, that drive all of the marketing, that drive the radio play and all that stuff because of this hoity toity, just annoying ass view of it. But um, yeah, the casual listener can just sit back and enjoy and not give a shit who wrote it, who did what. Many times that's what demeans them and gets them bounced out of the market. I mean, look at uh, um, you have SZA right now whose team is awful and she didn't get rep the way she should have and the, the critics were able to kill her um, with a lot of stuff she did and her stuff just never came to light that should have. You know, I mean, she had a banger of an album and because of those takes of she didn't write this, she had a ghostwriter on some of this stuff, this production's bad, she was on this track, why isn't it like that? All that stuff pretty much halted this whole career that was just taking off, so... Um, and I would dip back into my my new favorite phrase and tell those people that they can eat every part of my ass. <laughs> I I just I think I think those are bad takes. Mm-hmm. I I truly do, uh, especially if you're just talking about if an album is good, if a song is good. When you start getting into career accolades, yeah, a lot more of that stuff matters if you're trying to parse through like the whole of somebody's career. Uh, mentioning or or factoring in the idea that you know even before he was putting out his own hits ed sheeran was also a prolific songwriter for other people that's really important when you start talking about what like ed sheeran's impact on music right but if you're just looking at evergreen and you're like do i like this or not who cares if he wrote it? He did, but who cares, right? Well, people crowd put off of bad takes, and bad takes are what drives the market, unfortunately, which we're seeing with every uh, genre of everything that some people want to enjoy. There's this whole killing of the killing of the smile, basically, uh, in the entertainment no. industry that well um, drives with pop them. music, there's like this weird double standard too, that even if your name is on the songwriting credit, critics will give you more accolades for that than if you wrote every song on an album but one person may have helped you on three of them or the big well they didn't write these three and it's just this weird explanations i mean perfect modern example the olivia rodrigo bullshit where it's hey this is a pop song from a woman you need to you need to give credit to these two women who also wrote songs that you know were pop songs and so all of a sudden taylor swift gets a writing credit for a song she had absolutely fucking nothing to do with um for an olivia rodrigo track 
And, you know, so it's like, and Olivia Rodrigo did that out of just courtesy, like, hey, whatever, I don't care. But because of that, they took away the power of this album that this, at the time, 16 year old fucking wrote um, because of how the industry grows. So I'm with your take, Joe. It's just, unfortunately, you got all the dickheads who are running the stuff and have to shit on everybody's parade yeah. to, to drive. Well, if you look at the Rodrigo one in particular, like, uh, Swift got a song of the year originally nomination because of Rodrigo, right. but the Grammys actually have protocols for yep. when you just sample a lyric. So they took that away. She's still nominated for her own. Yeah. But, and I think that's when it comes weird songwriting. I mean, no one's ever going to question the success of Beyonce and look how many songwriters will be on a Beyonce song one second I mean, song of the year. Ryan Tedder wrote her four biggest songs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he's won Grammys for those. So it's, there's so much of that shit that comes into play because that's what drives the headlines. You know, like even uh, the the nods for song of the year and all that stuff that are out is Taylor Swift won't get credit. And then you read, it's like, oh, for this Olivia Rodrigo song that she had nothing to do with. But the headlines drive it. And then everybody starts to question her song, rating skills, Olivia Rodrigo's album. And next thing you know, you have the bullshit narratives and nobody's giving anybody a chance. So it's this vicious cycle that we have. And that's why I'm happy that we do things like this to have the dialogue for the two people who listen, who can kind of see through that bullshit. And yeah, um, hey, and- it's like 15. And yeah, so the 15 of you, if you like it, make sure to comment and subscribe because we'll, we'll deliver it every week. Now, my list is quite short, folks, and it was to start and then people gave us other songs and my long list is down like 12 songs. So I'm going to be rather quick with mine, honestly, because I didn't realize just how small it was. So from Eric Church, who is one of the few country artists that I actually like listen to quite a bit, um, Round Here Buzz, Kill a Word and Record Year, great songs. I know you guys aren't big country fans, but I think you'd actually appreciate the song Record Year, especially with its nod to a lot of different musicians and different genres. It's, it's a really one of those tracks that helps you go through the, the decades of music, which is kind of cool. Uh, Kendrick gave us King Kunta and The Black or the Berry. Uh, Rihanna, Bitch Better Have My Money in Four or Five Seconds. That Four or Five Seconds is just one of the most bizarre mashups ever, and so it will forever make my list of songs because who saw Paul McCartney out there with Kanye and Rihanna? <laughs> Like of all things. Um, Demi Lovato, Confident and Cool for the Summer. Alessia Cara, I could say that whole album, but I'll say Here and Wild Things. I remember the night I saw her on Fallon, I called JJ. So I don't know what times when it was where he was, but I know it was late here. And I said, holy fuck, we have the next big thing. And he's like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, you got to hear her. Just much like when him and I watched Childish Gambino for the first time, you know, it's like my excitement was just ramping up in, in like an incredible amount. And then she went on to have a big year. Um, but she sang here on there and it was just so great. Hideaway from Dea, Megan Trainer, like I'm going to lose you. Me, myself and I by g Easy. I, I hate that song. It was just everywhere. Uh, Chris Stapleton, might as well get stoned. Nobody to blame. Parachute the Traveler. Even if you're not a country fan, listen to that album. It's the songwriting is incredible. He wrote for people for years and years before that. Just um, such a nice personal tale. Piece by Piece from Kelly Clarkson. Uh, I didn't like that song until I heard her do it a cappella and totally got new respect for her voice out of that. I mean, I knew she could sing before, but that was just uh, to hear like the emotion behind it too. You know, it was, it was really well done. Uh, Leon Bridges was somebody who's just in my constant rotation river and twist and grooving Cerberellis. Cause I can't not name her whenever a year pops up. I can, she used to be mine. Great song. Sit still look pretty from Dea. Unbreakable Spile from Tori Kelly, who I wish she would release more stuff because she's awesome. Used to Love You from Gwen Stefani. You Should Be Here from Cole Swindell and Youth from Troy Sivan, which I remember when I shared that with coworkers, they were like, why are you sharing this song about some dude listening to his virginity? And I was like, I just think it's a fun song. So um, I really enjoyed his album. It was great. So now to my top six, uh, Nathaniel Rateliff, Son of a Bitch. Love that fucking song. I, it's on every playlist I have. Chris Stapleton, Tennessee Whiskey, Kendrick with All Right, Adele, When We Were Young, Alil, Cravajo, I don't think I'll ever get that right, but How Far I'll Go from Moana, had to make my list, that song slaps, that was almost my song of the year, to be honest. Uh, Save it for the soundtrack episode. (laughs) But it was also, I mean, Alessia Cara released it as a single that year, too. That's true. And, um, but I like to give credit to the actual person of the island who sang it because it's such a great song and my song of the year is actually Alessia Cara Scars to Your Beautiful I I love the writing on it she wrote that when she was 15 slash 16 years old uh spoke the truth and then 
really started on this tour, you know, this public tour of helping with mental health and um, destigmatizing it and using that song to really help empower young females and um, teenagers going through it. And, you know, coming right out of the gate, that's, that was her mission, you know, and then she was on Logic's track, you know, with the, with the hotline, all that stuff. And um, she really stayed committed to it. And so if you look, she hasn't released many songs in the past few years. That's because she's been doing a lot of stuff surrounding that. So uh, it's one of those songs that imitated life, but also got a life of its own. And so Skies Too Beautiful is my song of the year. And that's a wrap on 2015, gents. Yes, it is. As we get closer, I think my lists are done through 2019 right now. Uh, so it's show been, off. It's been, I just trying to squeeze it in while I can before the madness hits. So it's been interesting to see those. Now, I haven't looked, but I left for Thule in 2016, about halfway through, and didn't get back to the States until about halfway through 17. Uh, and so we didn't have a radio. Well, we had a radio station, but we ran that and we didn't have good enough internet to like really download music and stuff like that. So our, our backlog on the, the computer for the radio station, as well as our morale drive was all at least, uh, a year to two years old was like the most recent stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's an actual period of time where it wasn't just like, I didn't actively listen to new stuff, but I might've still run into it. Like I literally couldn't. So like, that'll be interesting when I start going through 16 and 17 to, to really see how much of it I, I know now versus what I actually heard when it was new. This is going to be the timeline where I just gravitated towards a couple artists. And that's really all I listened to during that time period. Like um, Chris Stapleton, who we just mentioned to, I think I listened to that one album through 2019. <laughs> so um this is where I really, it was that. And then me listening to my eighties and nineties stuff. So um, it was like Chris Stapleton and Wu-Tang were like my, 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 my two musical choices through the next few years, but uh, not the new Wu-Tang that we got either. Cause none of that's going to make any of my list, but um, any shout outs before we take off here. Um, shout out to your favorite local place. Whoever you are listening, shout out to your favorite local place. Go patron them. That would be Rhino's Comics, Jimmy Z's, uh, Five Star Plates, and Barber's Bar and Grill. I, I didn't mean you specifically, but oh. whoever's listening, the well, person that's listening right now, your favorite local place. Go to that place. Yes, uh, definitely patron your, your local vendors, and those three are my favorites, so definitely do those if you're in the New York area, but support your local businesses now more than ever. Shout out to Calzones. That's fair. Love me a Calzone. All right, gents. I will Can't see argue you, with it. I will see you in the future slash past of 2016. I don't know. I've got a date that day. Then I'll see you. <laughs> those hot Tuesday dates. <laughs> no, those hot 2016 dates. You know, oh. 2016 was the year I actually dated. So <laughs> well, I hope that we have some fun stories to go along with those tracks. Uh no. <laughs> All right, gents, until we meet again.